Hey, well, welcome to The Ends of the Earth. This is a uh, kind of a reviving uh, broadcast that we've done. Actually, we've always done it in audio version, um, but with technology ever advancing, we can now do them as, uh, as interviews on Zoom, and that is a wonderful thing. So today we get to have a conversation with uh, Bill Maston, the president and founder of Nexus Vivis International, and also my dad, um, which is going to be a great amount of time. If you're wondering what to expect in this time, this will be just a more of a casual conversation, interview situation, wherein we get to talk about the exciting things that the Lord is doing with the mission, how what it means to walk by faith, and and what it means to grow in the faith uh, in this time, and. And just to share some general kind of life and information together and and all that is. So, Bill, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Good to be here. Mm. I'm so glad that you could uh, make time to uh, to chat in spite of all the uh, coronavirus madness and all the ad added um, chaos and events. Uh, so thank you for joining us. Well, let's start off just in case there's someone who is not familiar with Nexus. Let's start off with a, a brief description of what Nexus is and what it's about. Sure. Um, thanks for having me. Um, Nexus uh, really is, uh, comes out of the Second Timothy two two to four principles, where Paul talks about um, taking what we have of God and His Word and giving to others who are responsible, who then give to others, who give to others, and. Um, so in 2004, we, we, I, uh, um, and, and a small group around me had prayed, wondering if God would have uh, s something a little more um, uh, formal. And so we, we formalized this idea, not that there aren't other people doing it, I, we just don't know who they are, but um, this an idea that we, <clears throat> who understand in this case, youth work, that's the tip of our sphere, seeing young people come to know Jesus and become followers for hopefully a lifetime, instead of going to a country and doing the youth work, doing evangelism, doing discipleship, etc., that we, we come alongside the youth leaders in those countries um, who are, have already got the same passion. And where we can add value, um, we add value. And currently, that was in 2004, and there was the plan at that time that it was just be, uh, Nexus would be a 501c3 for me, a nonprofit, to go as long as the Lord had me go and, and not to grow an organization and such and so on. And so, but 16 years later, there's, um, uh, there's 19 of us involved with Nexus staff, uh, six of whom uh, we call ambassadors for youth ministry, Nexus ambassadors for youth ministry who live in uh, uh, other countries mm -hmm. who are carrying out this vision of equipping youth leaders um, to reach young people, reach out to lost young people, proclaim the gospel, and walk with those that want to follow, um, and then hopefully see again Second Timothy two to four, see those, uh, see that 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 uh, uh, multiply. Mm -hmm. So currently we're involved with uh, sixty five uh, youth leaders of organizations, youth ch and churches, and such and so on in sixty five countries, and we're involved best we can tell. They are involved with over one hundred fifty thousand young people a week, and so um, Nexus is an indirect mission, if you will to the tip of the spear, which is young people, but critical. Because um, in my years of traveling internationally, um, I've seen very few youth ministries fail because they didn't sing their songs just right, or they, you know, they, they didn't bring the right food. And I've seen multiple youth ministries fail and or ministries in general fail because of character, because they, they, they just dry out and burn out because they're not being attended to um, by someone who says, how are you doing with Jesus? Tell me what scripture is teaching you. And then, yes, talking about youth work, but not jumping over those first two things to get to the third. So it's a very encouraging time for Nexus. Hmm. That's fantastic. You know, as I listened to the kind of the mission statement, the direction of Nexus, I realized that it sounds very specialized. I mean, it's, it's specifically international uh, missions and groups and building up inter indigenous leaders and equipping people. It's specifically... Uh, young people in focus, but what would you say the the eternal uh, principles that you're building on that could be that essentially that you've learned over the years that that are applicable to any believer regardless of where they're at or what their place on the wall is their their part in the body of yeah. Christ is. Yeah, no, that's great. Well, we are very specific and we are very simple. We've got four or five illustrations that kind of anywhere you go, if you you're around us long enough, you're going to see and probably the main the main one is we call it the tree of core values. 
-hmm. And we know, we believe this applies because it's biblical. Um, it doesn't just apply to reaching young people. It, it, it applies to a believer who works at a store or is retired or whatever, who has a heart for mission and ministry in their neighborhood um, and so on. And it's, it's the image of a tree <clears throat> and the, the roots um, represent the person, uh, a, a person's own faith journey. And Psalm 1, um, like a tree planted by streams of water, we, we believe that um, a person's roots, their own journey with Christ is, is, is first and foremost the most important thing. So we spend a lot of time with, um, and, and I just in relationships with other men that I hang out with, a lot of time with roots, mm. talking about their roots. How are you growing? Because you shared with me even earlier today, times like this, and they do come, right? They may not always be in the form of pandemic, but it could be a, a stressful family situation or just whatever. Um, those times either tend to make or break a person in their faith. Mm -hmm. And if a person is in, in a healthy lean, that's going to tend to want to make their roots, uh, draw them deeper into the soil and harden the bark of the trunk. So they're, they're, they're stronger. I've been to, I was in Taiwan a couple of years ago and there was this uh, tree that was hundreds of years old that was just laid on its side because a typhoon had come through uh, the week before. And, and uh, the reason it, it, it just had it been protected, but slowly and surely the trees around it were taken out. And so it wasn't protected anymore and its roots were all along the surface. Mm. And so this typhoon hit and this big, 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 big tree just boom, took it out. Mm. So the roots <clears throat> are on personal faith, lead and build into the community, the trunk and that would be the, the, the people you're in fellowship with or we who are in ministry, like uh, in, in Nexus, would be the youth leadership teams. The, 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 the trunk is the sum of the roots. Mm. You bring your roots, I bring my roots, so on, so on, so on. And we come together and we have this common vision for X, whatever X is. Um, and if I come in unhealthy, then, then what's great is in this community, this, this authentic, real community, Acts 2, Acts 4 type communities, um, we, we, God uses us to, to, to sharpen each other, mm -hmm. you know, to call each other up the hill, you know, when, 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 we're, when we're settling for less, you know, no, it's not okay. You, you need to be in your Bible every day. You need to be praying every day. This is not, this is big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, so the roots lead to the trunk and the trunk lead to the branches and the branches are simply those things we, those visible things we do in our disciple making, um, uh, calling. For Nexus and youth work, it's, it's youth programs, um, it's uh, Young Life Clubs, it's you know, outreach things or whatever. It's the visible programs we do and the fruit are then, um, the fruit are then disciples, young people who come to know Christ. Mm. Uh, and so that's, there, there, there are other ones we use, but that would be uh, probably the most noteworthy. It's our logo actually, is, is the logo of a tree with deep, deep branches. So, Yeah, I love the symbolic value of that, of that logo because you're keeping that constantly uh, before you, but particularly appreciate the, the organic nature of that because it's so um, easy for us in, in any organization, whether that's a church or a missions organization, to think along worldly lines as if that somehow the Lord would you know, sacrifice one that use someone in a way that's destructive to them, but encouraging or helpful to the body or to the group or to the organization. And yeah. the reality of this, that picture, and again, since we spent so much time talking about it, is the incredible value that, of understanding that the church grows and the organizations grow in health when the individuals grow in health. Yeah. And that yeah. it's, not, it's not a, well, you gotta, you got to sacrifice your walk with Christ in order to serve Christ. No, it's quite the contrary. Um, you know, that's a, that's a pretty valuable, pretty valuable <laughs> observation. Has that, how has that principle, as it's guided your ministry, how have you seen that bear itself out? Well, I mean, the story comes to mind. One of our staff members was in Africa with a group of African pastors, <clears throat> and he taught first three days on the tree. And, um, at the end of those three days, what, one of the things that sometimes we'll do is, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the healthy tree and how it looks in the soil and, you know, and the fruit isn't wonderful, it's good. And then what we'll do is have a slide or draw a picture of a tree that's upside down with its roots up in the air. Mm -hmm. We'll ask the question, what, how, how fruitful and how much lifespan do you think this tree has? Mm -hmm. and, and talk about what this, you know, what, what might be the physical effects. If a tree could talk, what would it say it feels <laughs> if it's upside down and, and its branches are acting like its roots and its roots like its branches. And obvious, um, you know, um, phrases come out, burn out, um, you know, lose the faith, whatever, whatever. 
And this group of 13, 14 African pastors <clears throat> began to weep mm. and literally weep. And they just said, this is how we've been living our lives, our whole ministry life. Mm. And, you know, it was, they just had never seen it. You know, it wasn't, we didn't make this up. My goodness, it's Psalm 1, it's John 15, it's Jeremiah 17. It's, it's just through the scriptures, right? Mm. You can't give away what you don't have. Mm. Um, but they're out there doing their, their best with what they had. And, and they, they see this picture, like you said. I mean, I don't know how they're doing this day, per se, but at least at that moment, there, it was an aha moment for these, these men in charge of congregations in uh, rural Africa. Mm. You know, one of the big problems that churches and, and missions have, and I think you mentioned this uh, earlier, uh, but is is the problem of mission drift, you know, where we start off in the right direction where the Lord's called us and where that's directing us and then just over time slowly creeps in another uh, focus, another possibility. What has Nexus done to avoid mission drift, to keep you centered on where the Lord has called you to be and, and, and how the Lord has designed you to be used in, yeah, the, in the body? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, probably five years in, we began to feel like, you know, God wanted us to identify the spear and the tip of the spear. And we spent about a year as a staff. And at that point, there were five or six of us we spent once a month talking about um, one of our folks that was involved talked about this word called charism, which I mean, I, I believe means gifting, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and um, some organizations have this thing they call charism. You might call it a mission phrase that keeps, keeps uh, uh, the ship centered, you know, keeps uh, the ship going towards the North Star and not, mm. not getting off, right? Um, and we spent about a year and, and we came up with what we believe is, is our charism. It's our, it's our rudder. It's what keeps us going North Star, which simply is this. We, Nexus staff and ambassadors, are disciples of Jesus Christ who are making disciples of catalytic youth leaders around the world who are making disciples of young people around the world. That's our spear. The tip of the spear is young people. So just recently we had a situation come up um, that was really a good situation. I mean, it was a really godly need and such and so on. Um, and some of our folks were, yeah, we really need that. And I said, no, we, we, we don't. There are other people whose spears are exactly that. What we need to do is connect this need with them. Mm. And we need to be, be about our work. Not that that's, it's a great thing. It's a wonder and a needed thing. What they were talking about, the need that they were talking about, but it's not Nexus. And they go, yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. But if we had, didn't have that charism that we talk about every time we're together, and if we, you know, that we hadn't stacked hands on it, all it would be is my opinion versus theirs. Mm. But all of a sudden we have a written, a written statement that we all put together, that we all agreed to, that says, this is who we are, this is how, we're, where we're going, and this is how we do it. Mm. And so it's like, oh, well, just remember, remember, remember. So very mm. helpful. Well, yeah, and the, I, I really appreciate the humility of that. I mean, it's interesting that every church and, and very, uh, very many missions kind of see themselves, whether or not in their rhetoric, but in their, the way that they really conduct themselves as the be all end all the center, the most important thing in the body of Christ. I mean, I guess it's a human problem, but there's a great humility in understanding where the Lord has positioned us and knowing that we're going to go about doing that as well as we can and allowing other people to meet the other important needs and let them serve there. I think that is of critical importance. And the other thing that I think is just unspeakably valuable is that continual return back to basics. You said that you uh, go back regularly and highlight this, not, not because anybody forgot, but because we might lose sight of it would seem. Um, has that, has that been, would you say pretty instrumental in keeping you on point with your, with your mission? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, that it, it's, it's most difficult with our ambassadors um, only because of distance and communication. But again, this COVID-19 this COVID thing has increased communication with our ambassadors and so on via Zoom to where we would be with them. Maybe one or two of our staff would be with an ambassador, say, in, in um, India twice a year. Well, now we're on once a week. And he's, the, the, this guy, um, Sunit, is not just with our staff person, Kevin, who's a great guy. But he's with Craig, he's with John, he's with Holm, he's with Jess, he's with me. Mm. And so soon it all of a sudden is getting, you know, reminded and built up from five people once a week. Mm. 
And, you know, as a matter of fact, this week on our Asia regional call, we're, we're going to be teaching and talking about the charism. Well, mm. we do it almost every time. Yeah. We had one of our staff members who's been with us for 10 years now, last year at our, um, at our all staff gathering in June. He's really just, he tells you what he thinks and <laughs> you like it, you like it, you don't, you don't. I'd love it. He's just a good, good guy. And he said, you know, Bill, I've been coming to these for eight or nine years. And <clears throat> all that we really need to change on the agenda is the date. Because <laughs> that's, that's what we talk about is always the same. And he said, I love it. It makes me feel safe. Mm. And this guy's a strong dude. He, if he didn't like it, he'd say, come on, let's, we got to do some Hail Mary training. <laughs> he said, no, the, I know this is who I'm going to be reminded of who we are, where we're going and how we're going to get there every time. And that makes me feel safe. Mm. Tremendous, tremendous. Well, um, as we as we progress through our discussion, I'd love to have an opportunity or open up an opportunity for you to share any especially encouraging or uh, stories of what the Lord is doing through Nexus. Do you have any specific accounts that you'd like to share or things, stories, things that have been going on that you think would be encouraging to uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ? Well, I hope so. I mean, it, it made me kind of, I was out for a walk. It was two weeks ago on our Asia call. Um, uh, one of, one of our, our, our staff that works with uh, specifically with uh, uh, our partners in Nepal shared a story about he had been um, in Nepal with, with our Nepalese ambassador home and they were teaching full spectrum youth ministry, which basically is, is just how do we reach out to lost young people? How do we proclaim the gospel? You know, how do we nurture them when they say yes and so on and so forth? It's just, we just, we call it full spectrum. So we start from the beginning and hopefully go to the, the continuum end, if you will. And um, they were specifically focused on what we call Red Zone, which is reaching out to lost young people. This group of uh, eight or 10 youth, uh, youth pastors in, in Nepal. And uh, this, one, this one youth pastor named Lucas um, didn't tell anybody but um, after it was over, um, this, this seminar on reaching out to lost young people, he went on a 40-day fast, and he asked God to give him a heart for lost young people. Wow. And he didn't tell anybody. He just did it. He didn't tell our staff person or the, the, the ambassador. He just went on this fast for 40 days. And he came back, and the first week he was back was when the COVID thing, the lockdown stuff started happening globally in, and as well as in Nepal. And he, he, uh, he wrote to our, st our staff person uh, that was involved with him, um, Craig, and, and he just said, um, uh, this week I, I led three young people to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And he, did, he told them then about, you know, the fasts and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And now I disciple them to, to Jesus kind of thing. And um, then the next week, two more young people. And then um, and we're here about this on, on, on our, our, our Zoom call. And then uh, our ambassador from India had led two kids to Christ. They can't meet in groups. And in some countries, they can't meet in groups, not because of COVID, but be just because of danger, because of what, you know, things are, how things are politically. But um, and the, the, an ambassador from one of those closed countries had, had led a couple of kids to Christ, too, just by going out in the street and just seeing some kids and talking to them and just friendship evangelism. Friendship mm -hmm. evangelism. Mm -hmm. So to me, you know, that which the enemy intends for evil, and yeah, there's a lot of evil, and a lot of people are, you know, really in a bad way. God, the Holy Spirit, is going to make good. And those are just, in my mind, three stories from the front that um, kind of go, okay, this is, this is good. And, and, and it doesn't mean anything else for, about anyone else, but for who we are, we're in the right place. Mm. So that was very encouraging. I saw that's, that's who we are. Well, that's tremendous. That's really like adrenaline to the soul just to know that even in these uh, difficult times and challenging times maybe even especially that the lord is uh, moving in his people and moving through the word and the power of his gospel to transform the world to save lives to to do what he has uh, planned for us so thank you for sharing that story um for a final question before we uh, close our our short interview together i would ask uh, what would you say has been your uh, personal growth pattern in this COVID virus throughout these last month or two months or whatever it is now, how has the Lord been uh, challenging and walking with, how have you been challenged and walking with the Lord in this time? What have you been learning personally? I think early on Psalm 23, <clears throat> um, and I don't know theologically how this works. I, I, just, I really honestly just know how it feels. <laughs> the Lord um, 
you know, the church we attend, uh, um, uh, Fort Collins Bible Church was doing Psalm 23 on their Wednesday night services. And um, I was just reminded, um, <clears throat> he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. And the, those are not the casual um, actions of a shepherd who's of a casual shepherd. Mm. Those are very directed and very, you no, know, you will lie down. <laughs> <laughs> it is good water. Mm. Um, and so it struck me that I, I wondered if, you know, in, in this, um, all this stuff is this, this might be for believers who have the, who have the freedom to, to lie down mm. and just be refreshed, not, not for refreshment's sake, but in Christ close to mm. the shepherd. Right. Mm. That's what we need. That's the final answer. He, he, God always has a final word. The final word is Christ crucified and, and born again, or raised, raised from the dead. Mm. Amen. That's the final word. Well, what better place to be than at the shepherd's feet? And mm. even if he has to push me down to get me to just, just, it's good. I've got the rest of the world for this time. Mm. You, you, you just, you know, you follow me, you stay with me. So I think that's one. And I think another one is that uh, another thing that I've just learned personally is it feels like, <clears throat> again, we, we, we alluded to it earlier, um, that which the enemy intends for evil, God is always going to work good. Mm. He's never, we may not see it, um, uh, reading about Stephen and how, he, uh, you know, after he was stoned and the believers are all scared and they just kind of, you know, big persecution is happening to them. And, and um, you know, just the, the sense that the believers didn't give up the faith. They just went, they just had to go underground. Mm. And so probably more, I, I don't know this, right. But probably more conversation with people in shops and this and, and people that are scared. And, and I, I want it, now is a time, right. For me, mm to be a person who not puts, tries to put that hope on, but that hope is within because Christ within me, Colossians 1, 27, 29, hope of glory is there. Mm. And he is hope. He is joy. He is peace. And so I just have to go out and walk around without my mask on sometimes. Mm. <laughs> That's tremendous. Yeah. It's, it's amazing to me again, how on so many levels we see, we can look at the church, you know, universal over the, over the whole globe and see how, the Lord is doing amazing and, and positive things and uh, bringing us to our senses. But also there's a reality that any of us who is looking at this um, trial at this difficulty is as anything less than an opportunity to grow in the Lord is really missing a great uh, opportunity to do great chance, right? To grow in our trust and grow in our faith. And, and like with any situation, but especially these ones, it should be, I would say, easier for us to note that well, we always only had Christ to fall back on. So thank you very much for sharing that. Well, as we close our time, uh, can you share just briefly with us um, how we can support uh, uh, Nexus Vivis International in prayer and how what concerns that you have and any way in which we can be in prayer and support for you? Well, I mean, two things come to mind. One is just praying for our staff and ambassadors and global partners that we would be like the tree that we talked about earlier, that in this time, its roots are not going uh, along the surface, but are going deeper. Mm. Um, I think that's that's the biggest prayer. Um, I think after that, everything kind of takes care of itself. But if, if uh, people are, um, just to pray for um, <coughs> excuse, excuse me, financial resources, at this point, we're fine. Mm. Uh, fine in the sense that, you know, we, we're, we're, the wolf's not in the kitchen, but I think we're still early in this thing to know. And, but, but, but here's the thing, right? That we would be people, board and staff who are wise, very wise in how we think and how we, we manage the resources we have, uh, number one, number two, but not trust in them. Um, mm -hmm. but, in, but indeed, you know, are, 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 are in prayer to the Lord for his continued sustenance and provision and surprises. Um, mm -hmm if that's what you would choose to do. So those, those are two things. Mm, grand. Well, with that, I'd love to uh, close our time with the word of prayer. Hey. Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you for this opportunity to gather together, to meet and to uh, share the wonderful news about what you've done and what you are doing and what you are yet to do, where you're clearly leading this entire world. We thank you that in the uh, reality of this uh, 
madness that we see in the world around us, that you are still sovereign. You're still in control. We still entrust ourselves entirely to your care and can do so because your word is revealed that you are omniscient, omnipotent, Lord, omnipresent. There's not a thing that goes on without your knowledge. And um, Father, with that in mind, we specifically entrust to your care the ministry of Nexus Vivis International. What a, what a great uh, opportunity and what, what fantastic things are being done to continue to reach out and equip the body of Christ to reach out with the gospel of Jesus Christ, the hope of Jesus Christ to young people throughout the world. I pray that um, all the people involved uh, with that ministry, ambassadors and staff members and uh, the various people who are affected by the ministry would remain encouraged, would continue to lean in and seek the uh, the work of the the Lord of your work, of the ministry of your word, uh, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, that the, all the financial and physical needs um, would be met for that work and that the opportunity would continue to present itself to disciple people for Christ. And also, uh, Father, that as that opportunity presents itself, that the staff and, and um, other members would be encouraged to take advantage of it and, and truly make hay while the sun shines, Lord, and redeem this time for the days are evil. But Lord, you are truly, as we've seen, working all things together for good. We praise you. We thank you for all of these things. And in Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, again, thank you. thank thank you so much for joining me and uh, uh, for letting us uh, share this time of discussion for the pearls of wisdom and the spiritual edification and encouragement that you put out for the body of Christ. And we'll hold you continually in prayer. Thanks much. God bless you and have a great day. And I hope everyone else is continually praying for and working towards the end of seeing the gospel go to the very ends of the earth.